Hi, this is Terry with Sweet Stitching, Embroidery and Design. On behalf of Steve Hirschman, I'd like to thank all of you who volunteered to beta test the software. It's called M Letter, E M B L E T T E R. I will show you how to add a font that you purchased from one of the popular uh, digitizing companies. I like Jolson's or River Mill and add it to your this program and then you'll be able to use your keyboard to type it and then create uh, an embroidery file that you can use with Sew Up Pro or any other embroidery software. First off, we'll uh, go up here to Tools, Editor Path, and we'll go to Program Files, SNS Computing, and Sew Up Pro, and double click on Sew Up Pro. And this way, when we save our file, it will open up automatically in Sew Up Pro. I've already got a couple uh, fonts mapped to the computer already, and the ones that are all set up have a little symbol here to the left of them. This one does not because I've not mapped it yet, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. If you uh, hover over the T with the little plus sign here, you'll see that it says Add Font. These other options here, the help and about, they're not active yet, but they will be in the future. Uh, and you can see the different features here on the toolbar. It's just like uh, any other software. This little piece of paper here shows that you can uh, create a new document. We'll just close this other window. This is to open files, this is save. And these are grayed out because you don't have anything on the screen yet and you haven't done anything. So we'll click this little uh, button here to add font. And this is the embroidery alphabet editor and we'll click add font. And now we've got the folder view up here where we're going to browse for the folder. And I just happen to have one all set up here. Testing. And this is the font folder I'm going to use. What you need to do though is um, some of the fonts that you purchase from the different digitizers will have uh, several different sizes like maybe one inch, two inch, three inch and you need to have a separate folder for each separate size because you know, you've only got you know your keyboard keys that can do each uh, different size. Right now we've got one inch right here, this collegiate, and uh, once you select the folder, you don't have to do anything else, just click OK, and then wait a second. And here they are. And now that the letters have come up on the display here, you see the instructions and this is the instructions on how to map your keys to the keyboard, I mean your letters to the keyboard. This is how to adjust the character baseline. This is the baseline and you can see right now that it is above the letters. It needs to be in line with them because if it's not, when you type the letters they'll all be um, lower than what they're supposed to be. And current letters as required what this does is uh, you adjust the spacing between your letters and it says select a letter and then use the up or down arrow keys to position it on the baseline. But what we can do here since we've got so many that need to be adjusted, number three says adjust character baseline, it says click on a blank line, uh, click on a blank area of the icon pane below then use up and down arrow keys. So what we do is we click over here on a blank spot. You can see that flashing a little bit. And then you just move your arrow key and that will adjust this line here.
and I adjust it until I don't see any of the lettering underneath it. And it's looking pretty good. When you look down here, you can use the scroll bar and check your other letters and see if they're where you'd like to have them. Everything's looking pretty good here. This font happens to be all caps. Usually uh, your cap, your uh, fonts uh, have the lowercase and uppercase, but in this case they're all uppercase. But it's the same principle. So what we want to do now is uh, number two here where it says associate letters to keyboard. You left click on one of the fonts here. This is the number zero. So you left click number zero first. I know it sounds kind of tedious, but you only do this one time. Click zero, and then click the corresponding key on your keyboard. Click the zero, and make sure it's not the O, but it's the zero. And then click the number one, then the number two, three, and see, I did this deliberately. I clicked the wrong ones, so you can check yourself to see if you've done it correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back, and we're going to do number two again. Left click it, two, and you'll see the number two is below it now. Click three, click four again, five. and so on. And then when we get to our letter here, hold down your cap lock and press the letter A. This is your ampersand, so your shift key is already down, so just press this. I mean your cap lock is down, sorry about that. I misspoke. You've got to hold down your shift key. Now there's your ampersand. There's your B. And it's showing a D here, so you want to do this to every letter on here. just to make sure it's uh, the correct letter showing. And uh, I won't do them all just for the sake of time, but that's how it, you do it. And then uh, you go ahead and click OK. And now if you want to uh, type a word, when you do the drop down arrow, you'll see the collegiate is here and it is ready to go. Uh, I've already got Twilight. And uh, as I showed you earlier, let's, let's do it again. We'll type hi, everyone. And if you look here, you can see that I didn't adjust the baseline. So we need to edit our font. See how everything is kind of wonky here? So we'll go to the Add font screen again, only this time we're going to edit the existing font. And that brings up the drop down arrow here. So select by light. And you can see that the baseline needs to be adjusted in a really bad way. And some of the fonts are crooked, so we'll take care of that after we adjust the baseline. So remember, we uh, used number three here before. And there's the instructions for it if you need a reminder. So click over here in the blank area with your left mouse button one time. And then use your arrow keys up and down. Right now I'm using the down arrow keys. And that will bring the baseline down below the numbers and the letters. Do a little bit more. And then if we're looking at some of these individually, 
they need a little bit of assistance here. So you can just left click one of the letters, take your arrow key, and just keep tapping it until it goes down to the baseline. If it goes down too far, then just go back up again. And then here's a C that needs some help. here needs to come up a little bit. I messed this up ahead of time so we could edit this file. And that gives you an idea how to do this. And this G looks kind of strange, so let's move it down a little bit. And then also look underneath these to make sure that the correct number or letter corresponds with the number above it. Just kind of go along through here because if they don't, then you'll be typing a word and you'll be typing a C and you wind up with a T and you'll think, oh no, what happened here? You can click the arrow key here and check to make sure that these look like you want them to look. For the sake of time, we won't do all of them, but I messed up a lot, didn't I? Here's another one. We won't do them all, like I said, for the sake of time. And uh, you can also change the name if you don't like the name of the font. Or if you want to um, get the name of the company where you purchased it, just a reminder. Be Twilight. And I believe this is from Jolson's. I like to have a reminder because I'll forget where I bought my fonts. And then just click OK. Okay, now let's delete these letters that I had here before. Let's create a new one. New document here. Let's see if it looks better this time. Well, actually, let's try a different font. Let's do Jolson's again, Twilight. And if you look in the drop down, you can see that it's got that name that we changed it to, Twilight Jolson's. I still need to adjust the R and the Y, so let's go back in and do that again, just as a reminder of how to do this. We click the box here, and we're going to edit the font. We want to adjust our Jolson's again, the Twilight. There it is. We need to fix the E and the V. Oh, the R, I'm sorry. The V and the R. Just down a little bit. Definitely makes a difference when it's not on the baseline all the way. I try to have it exactly on there. I think that's the only two that needed a lot of help. I'll do the rest of these later. Let's close this and create another one. There we go. Let's see how it looks this time. Only we have to do this. Select like Twilight and Jolson's again. And we still need to edit one more. Let's go back here, remember? Add font, edit existing font, and we'll work on our Y this time. Twilight Jolson's.
and the Y is sitting up above the baseline pretty far. That is more like it. There we go. And if you look here, this was never mapped. This is the exclamation point. It says it's number one, and it's not a number one. So let's hold down the shift key. Make it an exclamation point. There we go. Now it's an exclamation point. So click OK. Let's do another one. Create a new document by clicking this little paper. OK. Much better. And there's the exclamation, <clears throat> exclamation point. And that's all there is to it. So let's go to File and we'll be saved. And this is my go to format here. I like the DST file. Call it Test. And we will exit. And now our design is in Solo Pro.